Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And you may or may not know that one of my favorite vehicles, if not my favorite vehicles in the game, has to be the one, the only, the mouse. Not only is this the heaviest vehicle in the game, but I feel like it is also one of the most fun to play. There is something so immensely rewarding about learning how to use this vehicle's armor and kind of feeling that it, it's not so much about limiting the the all of the shells that are going to hit your vehicle or even some of the ones that are going to penetrate your tank but just trying to make use of your hit points and sometimes decide about how am I going to live the longest in this situation to be able to uh, to possibly get through it to be able to live to be able to destroy my opponents now you can have that kind of mentality in in all vehicles inside the game but with a lot of tanks there's far less skill I feel in how you actually choose to defend yourself and so one of the things that I wanted to be able to do is get the mouse on my plays for free account the account which I spent absolutely nothing on and I make sure I never use any premium consumables and see whether the mouse can still be fun free to play now immediately one thing that I've noticed about the mouse is that this vehicle is not nearly as good without the field mods. As you can see, my mouse is limited to 24 kilometers an hour. Now that's because I don't have the mobility slot that will improve my turbo from 24 to 25, and I also don't have the penultimate field mod with the mouse, which improves its top speed limit by two additional kilometers an hour, which is massive because it would take me far less time to be able to get over this bridge, to be able to go get up in the face of my opponents where I can pressure them and not getting shot in the backside by the three vehicles that are behind me and you can see that those tanks are kind of looking a little bit funny now this video uh well this replay that we're seeing is actually from the patch just before in september where wargaming uh, changed mountain pass arguably for the better and in, in some ways quite significantly for the worse i'd say i had no problem with the way that mountain pass worked and especially when you get to push a bridge early in a mouse sometimes when i play the mouse especially on my free to play account but actually when i think about it on my main account as well i just play for fun if i spawn in on prokhorovka i tell the team i'm pushing the one and two line and by gosh, I push the one and two line. Sometimes even if I'm on Malinovka, I'm going to go and push over the field. Because the mouse isn't a tank which you should always take seriously. Now, I'm not saying that you should just go in and die and ruin the game for your team. But quite often, as you can see, by making an aggressive push play, when a 188 ton tank, before you manage to put equipment on it, manages to surprise your opponents, there's not really too much they can do. We've managed to cross and get vision on all of these tanks that usually sit and just shoot down towards the uh, the southwest of this location. And so, um, not only have we crossed the bridge and managed to pick up 2,000 damage, we're also being scout mouse here right now, pulling off 5,000 spotting. And now hopefully managing to bounce this TS-54, who wants to try and get the side of the mouse as you would expect, but unfortunately it's going to be too little, too late for you, little one, as we're going to be sending that what plus premium tank back to the carriage but not before he actually manages to get a fairly good shot into me they're doing good work here but hopefully i can overmatch the top of their roof as the mouse is very tall and that is one of the tank strengths and so what i've been finding with the mouse is it is a tank that you can't really improve that much through pay to win you know using a chocolate having kind of like the ultimate equipment that you have on the vehicle and so on and so forth while in getting a bond durability will significantly help because you can make it like the most healthy tank in the game putting a chocolate premium consumable on this vehicle takes away the fire extinguisher unless you want to sacrifice the med kit or the repair kit which i don't ever think is sensible and look at this i'm getting pushed around the corner by all of my uh, low health mediums here hoping like mouse go in and take the hit for us so we can farm up which is the mouse's job and the mouse should do it willingly but what i'm trying to clarify is that a premium consumable improves pretty much everything about your tank by five percent now a lot of you might be saying oh qb no it's not five percent it's ten percent no it's ten percent crew skill which roughly factors in at five percent actual raw increase which is the way that scaling with crew skill works inside world of tanks but that chocolate that five percent while it increase your accuracy your rate of fire your aim time your traverse speed your ground crossing speed so you can go faster uphill um your view range pretty much uh, a lot of things about your vehicle one thing that it won't do as it won't improve the armor of your tank. And it's not also going to improve your hit points. So when you play a tank like the mouse, which is not uh, based around, should we say, the soft stats which can be included, uh, improved 
with a premium consumer bubble, but hard stats. Like it's 260 millimeters of cheek armor, which hopefully you're going to be angling, and its ability to be able to get above 3,500 hit points when you have all of the uh, field mods. Those are stats which are relevant if you're paid to win or irrelevant, or if you're free to play, still stay the same and stay strong. And so accordingly, boy is it fun when you can pull off 9,500 combined in a five minute round, while also doing something as funky as pushing over the bridge at the start of the game. So let's do it all over again. Once again, playing the mouse on the free to play account. This time the matchup not nearly so nice as we're not playing against the tier eight. And I believe this is the new version of Mountain Pass. And funnily enough, this replay was literally the day afterwards. So, so I was thinking deja vu, but in a, in a very different map setup. So, after playing the mouse free to play, I can tell you when you first get it, don't don't be alarmed if you're struggling at the beginning. Firstly, the mouse is the kind of tank that actually requires quite a lot of practice to be able to figure out. For example, bad turret, good turret, like bad hull for the lower plate, good hull. But quite often you see the mouse sometimes overturn, which will become vulnerable to heat rounds along the upper part where they're not going to have the space protection along the lower part of the mouse. But it, this is something that you will just develop over, you know, 10, 50, 100 games inside it. But one thing I want to stress, that if any of you decide to be able to get the mouse for yourself, um, do not be alarmed when you've got the vehicle without its field mods. Because this thing with its speed, it's just so darn important to, uh, to have the top speed and to be able to get the slot bonus and not only to be able to get the slot bonus, but also to get the penultimate field mod, which allows the vehicle to go at 27 kilometers an hour with regular equipment is just so incredibly amazing. And there's just something awesome about sitting in front of a TVP and then going, oh yeah, you're going down that slope whether you like it or not, mate. I'm hoping he's gonna take a lot of damage or maybe he's gonna like flip himself. But now that there's the auto flip inside the game, it doesn't even really matter too much. Now, I feel like I might have overcommitted to this situation. And now you can see there's a mouse on the enemy team who's looking at me like, what are you doing, mate? His WT and his Yank Tiger manages to get a couple of shells into us. And I'm hoping that I can be able to get a shot in here. But I just can't quite manage to depress the gun. And I don't have the gold rounds to go through the upper structure. But uh-oh. Look, while I do have 3,400 hit points... You still don't want to be throwing away 1,162 at the start of the battle. And this game has not gone nearly as well as the previous one did. Luckily, we bounce the mouse's gold round. Luckily, the T95's gold round doesn't enter the, uh, the side of the vehicle. And while we have blocked 4,700 damage, we're not going to win the game by just sitting in front of our opponents and blocking unless we're facilitating our team to be able to do damage. There is a time when purely blocking damage in a mouse can allow your team to be able to win the battle because you go and you take the shots, you get all of the attention on you, maybe light up a few targets or just give your team the breathing room to be able to play their game and to be able to get the shots that are easier against your opponents. But that was definitely not one of them. I couldn't claim that sitting there on that bridge was really going to be intelligent trades. Sure, we got a Yank Tiger down, but is that ever worth trading 3,000 of a tier 10 tank to be able to get like 2,000 of a Yank Tiger? Almost certainly not. However, what we're going to see in this game is that the mouse, well, while it may be down, it's not always out. Now our opponents are able to use these rock formations here in front of us to be able to push right up underneath our noses and to be able to have better hold down positions. Although, when it's a WTR of Panzer IV, it's not really the best of hold down tanks. So in this kind of a situation, it looks like I'm going to try and blind fire at the weak point of the Yank Panzer E100. We can see that they had taken only one shot, so if they do reappear uh, on less than a one shot uh, hit points, then that would have mean that we managed to hit them. But realistically, I should have intuition switched there and fired gold at the cheeks. And unfortunately, the Yank Panzer appears on exactly the same amount of hit points, so it was wishful thinking going for that weak point. But what's this G-Saw doing? You don't want to get spotted by the mouse. The mouse is going to... Uh, definitely not it's gonna it's gonna bite back hard right in this scenario okay so our team is down by 2,000 hit points make that actually nearly uh, two and a half thousand hit points um, and we're just in the a beautiful scenario here for the mouse having a nice rock to protect our lower plate also hopefully finding weak points on the enemy team there managing to snipe up into the the cheeks I believe or the ears whatever you want to be calling them on the uh, BZ 68 who now get finishes off 
by the K91PT above. That's the second time we've managed to hit the Udes. Now starting to get our damage total up to something a little bit more respectable with 3,400. And I just love it. This is just the mouse in a nutshell. Having all of this like horde of opponents in front of you and still feeling like you can at least take chances against them with hopefully a bit of your armor. Uh, hopefully not just getting s sitting on a bridge and getting spammed with gold rounds or really high pen like on the FV405. So now you can see that I'm commissioning gold rounds here as our opponents start to get closer towards us. A quick passing mention should be made to the equipment that I recommend using on the mouse. I personally like vents, a turbo, and a durability device on this vehicle. A lot of you might be thinking, what, no gun rammer? And that's because, especially on a free-to-play account, even with recon and situational awareness on your commander and having the view range field mod, you see that you still can't get up to above 440 meters view range. While the vents will be adding roughly about 5 to 10 meters to that, so I feel like it's paramount to be able to just have that extra. Plus, the mouse isn't a vehicle which is about the damage per minute. The mouse is about sometimes surviving to be able to put in the extra shells, which is why the durability outweighs the gun rammer, in my opinion. And also being able to have kind of like the aim time and the accuracy and the turret traverse, all of these will be increased by 3% on the, uh, or with using vents over the gun rammer. And I, so I don't want to improve the worst aspect, one of the worst aspects about the tank, which is the damage per minute by 7% to sacrifice so many of the other aspects, which I can improve by three. And I do feel like the turbo and the durability are just so darn good on this vehicle that they would be, they would outweigh both the vents and they would also outweigh the gun rammer, in my opinion. So this is just mouse, right? 144 hit points left. If I had a better crew, we would have adrenaline rush right now. And not just an adrenaline rush in game, but an adrenaline rush IRL. These are the patented QB hit points at the end of the game. We spend them frivolously at the start of the battle to try and make exciting plays, and then we get rock solid tight uh, towards the last of the battle when we're down to a one shot. We bounce the 257, he ricochets the heat round off the side of our vehicle, and that's just so satisfying to angle that turret like this and to give them practically no chance of being able to get through outside of hitting the cheeks, as we can see with the mouse quite often having kind of googly eyes on the left and the right of the gun, as we can see here, which is something that you don't want to uh, hopefully have happen too often. But it's a risk that you have to take because if you're not shooting back at your opponent, then you're not really outlasting them unless, you're, unless your friends are going to be flanking them. And that's not the case here, as it feels like we are surrounded. But still, not down and out yet. We have a T95 in front of us, a 257 that we're trying to whittle down, and we've got a Yank Panzer and a Yank Tiger protecting us. Luckily, the K91PT, who's sneaky at the back of the map, does a fantastic job in finishing off the advance of the Amex M454, who probably was licking his lips in anticipation of finishing off the most healthy and highest uh, weight tank in the game. Once again, we bounce the 257. Now they're firing AP. So I'm hoping they've run out of their gold rounds. And when they run out of their gold rounds, that is when you know you are outlasting your opponents. And we have tanked enough to destroy the mouse a couple times over 7,000 damage blocked. This would be HT15 uh, done pretty much right about now. Uh, more than enough now, actually, when you also factor in the amount of damage that I've taken. With a, within an HT mission, this would actually be, uh, what was it, what is it going to be? It's going to be like 17,000 combined from HT-15. This is definitely the tank for doing any of the HT-15 missions if you are stuck on them still for the Object 260. We bounce the 257 once again, finish them off with a shell, and I um, finally stop loading gold and go back to standard rounds. Now that I feel that my job is done and the battle is won, the Yag Tiger gives me a thumbs up. I give the thumbs up to the Yag Tiger. And that is what it's all about. I can only imagine, well, at least I hope, maybe in my fantasies, that the Yag Tiger is sitting there and thinking, like, whoa, what a mouse! Just sitting there, tanking left, right, center, being the, the focal point of the enemy team to allow your friends to be able to, to play. And that is what's so beautiful about the mouse, is that not only is it a fun tank to play, not only does it have this kind of like high skill cap with your awareness and the way that you angle your armor, but it is also such a team-based tank. And as definitely a team player, it is, it is the, the vehicle for me. Now the FE-405 puts a shot into a 140. 
<laughs> falls off the bridge. I guess it was a bit of a, a ladybird moment for him there. I would all know t I would all know too well having also done it live in a T95 off that very bridge. But boy, what a game. 8,000 combined with 7,500 damage blocked. This was just defiance for the mouse. Sure, we threw away our hit points early on in the battle, but we're still standing at the end of it with the kind of epic feeling that only the mouse can give you. But look, I would be doing you a disservice if I was to try and pretend that paying uh, to have the, the chocolate and to have the advantage and to have all of the better stats in the mouse sometimes would possibly be able to get you through the battle. Now we're going to be rolling in on Ensk and oh, don't you love seeing two artillery on Ensk? Uh, you think if artillery mains out there that they've probably got this map banned. Not that they can really get rid of it in, on encounter. What we're going to see here in this battle is just the mouse doing everything that it can to try and support its allies, to try and be at that front, to try and be able to try and get the damage out. But also, hopefully, uh, the 777 realizes to let me through because I want to go get stuck into this fight and start the tanking progress. When you're playing on a map like Enz, you don't really have too much time. So I don't like to hang back, I want to get in, get all of my opponents focusing on me, and then hopefully allow my team to be able to work around. And with a 140 and the 283 going in, we can't leave them hanging. If I let them go and get tag teamed by these autoloaders, the T-57 heavy flanks round, the Cobra continues their assault, this will be done. And I'm asking the 113 Beijing Opera to come in with me here. And you'll notice in this game that really our, our rate of fire, even though we're pretty much going to be firing on reload in this game, just holds us back a little bit. So, my, I guess, well, maybe the gun rammer would have been the thing that would have been able to make a difference. Possibly on this map. Possibly on this map. Maybe you don't need the traverse speed, you don't need the view range, you don't need the aim time, you don't need the accuracy in these close quarters combat fights. And possibly the extra rate of fire might have given us that 7% edge with the rate of fire. But we're going to just keep going, keep gunning, keep plowing, because unfortunately you can see that our eastern flank has completely folded. And not only that, the two medium tanks that were along with us didn't really seem to care so much about their hit points as, as I do, needing them to be able to get through this huge glut of tanks that we've got in front of us. And again, firing on reload right now here in the mouse but it's just taking so long to be able to whittle down our opponents with the abysmal damage per minute that this vehicle is packing. The FP405, don't want to sit in front of him to be able to give him my cheeks once again, but unfortunately he hits my T10, so maybe I should have tanked for the T10 there. Now, unfortunately, the enemies have got flanking medium tanks going right through the center of us. We're going to put a round into the T10. Hopefully, the E100 is going to finish them off. And I got a bad feeling that E100's firing HE right now. Buddy, just put the AP round through the front. I bounce a Cran Vong's gold. I finish off the T10. I got an FP405 in front of me that I don't really want to drive in front of. So I decide, well, maybe if I reverse, I can come in from behind, stop the Cobra from getting uh, the flanking playoff, and hopefully get this A phase one. But right now, I just feel a little bit too slow, and I can't help but feel if I had the field mods, if I had the chocolate, that would give me the extra ground resistances, would give me the extra traverse speed, give me the extra rate of fire, give me just more, and just make my mouse better and stronger to possibly do something epic here. But one thing I'd also like to highlight with what mouse players do badly is that we have not intentionally but kind of hoarded our hit points. Before we just got hit by the A phase one and the artillery there, we had 3,000 of our team's hit points. And I want to highlight to all of you that, oh wow, that's brilliant. We just tanked 15,000 credits of gold rounds from the Cobra behind. But look what happens to your hit points at this stage of the battle. They are going to disappear. And that's why the mouse is a tank that relies on its friends. And it must keep the battle even. And it must commit its hit points early because it doesn't matter how many of you hoarded at the end of the game, eventually when your opponents amass against you, it is not going to go well. And irrelevant of doing 5,800 damage here in four minutes with a tank that pretty much only has 2,500 damage per minute, as well as also getting five times the amount of kills as the rest of my team combined, it just simply wasn't enough. And so for every game that you get in, we have like those epic last stands or those epic bridge pushes. 
you are going to have some where you feel at least helpless. But all in all, I'm actually really happy that I purchased this vehicle on my free to play account because it showed me explicitly that some statistics inside the game cannot be improved through pay to win. And the mouse, which has its armor and has its hit points as amongst its strongest attributes, do very, very well because of that. Whereas I'm really struggling on my free to play account with light tanks and medium tanks, for example, as those are tanks that require the 5% extra view range. They require all of that extra firepower that you'll get from the premium consumable. And when you're in a competitive scenario against another light tank, for example, the game is won and lost on these margins. So to conclude, for all of you free to play players out there, would I recommend getting the mouse as your first tank? No, no, I really wouldn't. I think I think your first tech tree in the game right now should probably be the British heavies. They're actually in a pretty good position. But when you've got some experience under your belt and you're feeling confident in your, in your heavies and know a thing or two about how most of the vehicles work in the game, this big boy 190 ton tank should definitely be on your goal list. Irrelevant if you're free to play or pay to win. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it today. Really hope you enjoyed this video and you loved seeing the mouse on my free to play account. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Friday, I'm going to be going live all day on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby with brand new tokens so you can get the final few that you need to get a tier five premium heavy for free. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.